Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HCT Test here. I'm a display reviewer and professional calibrator. I've unboxed the BenQ 2700 projector, which is also known as the HT3550 in the USA. Now I'm going to go through the picture settings in the user menu and see what's new because it's been quite a long while since I've last reviewed a BenQ projector. But before I go ahead with the explanation and the exploration, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Richard Sounds Manchester for sponsoring this video. I have come to know the staff at my local store in Manchester quite well, and I know they are extremely friendly, professional, and really do know what they are talking about when it comes to AV products. So if you are considering buying a new projector, even if it's not this BenQ W2700, please support this channel by considering buying it from Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086, mention HDTV test and they'll take care of you with great price and service. They may even have the projector installed for you to demo if you are so inclined. Thanks again for your support. So if I press the menu button on the remote control, this will bring up the picture menu and if we go down into picture mode there are various picture modes for you to select the bright picture mode is for use in a very bright room vivid tv mode for use in a reasonably well lit room cinema is meant to reproduce an accurate picture in a room with still some ambient lighting whereas dark cinema mode is meant to be used in near black or pitch black cinema theater room or home theater room and user i believe is the mode where you can actually adjust and save all your individual settings to your personal preference so let's go into the cinema mode and then what we'll do is to go through all these picture affecting controls brightness affects the digital black level so you can use this setting to set the video black level correctly on your projector now most projectors including this BenQ 2700 don't display below black data so what you want to do is to display a brightness test pattern and make sure that you can just barely see code value 17 on an 8-bit test pattern if you set this control too low, let's say if you go to below 50 or something, then you will darken the shadow detail and crush the shadow detail excessively. But if you actually set it too high, then you will be lifting the black floor unnecessarily when you know you can just leave it at the default of 50 and see all the shadow detail while maintaining the correct level of the deepest blacks. Now, contrast affects the other end of the contrast ratio spectrum, which is the digital white level. But as again, you know, most projectors don't display whiter than white data unless they have a super white function in the menu and this projector doesn't actually have it. So you basically don't want to set this setting too low, which will reduce the dynamic range of your image. Color basically affects all the colors globally and if you actually increase it, it will saturate and increase the intensity of the colors but if you decrease it, then it will desaturate the image on screen. Tint rotates the hue of all the colors on this projector and if you go slightly upwards, it will probably produce a reddish tint and if you go downwards, it will produce a greenish tint and if we go to sharpness control again i don't actually have a sharpness test pattern on display here but what you want is to make sure that your sharpness is set to a neutral level so that there is no additional or unnecessary or superfluous edge enhancement introduced if you go to the advanced settings this will allow us to perform more advanced calibrations on this projector with gamma selection if you go into it there are various 
gamma level if you go to lower gamma what you will do you will is that you will brighten the image and if you go to a higher gamma you will just darken the image and i'm intrigued to learn that there's a band Q option here i don't know what sort of gamma shape that the company has designed so i will be measuring it when i perform a thorough review of this projector color temperature allows you to adjust the grayscale and there are various presets here ranging from warm laminative which is again you can see that it is basically reproducing the native colors of the UHP lamp and then cool which is excessively blue and then normal and there is also a two point white balance controls red gain green gain blue gain red offset green offset and blue offset the gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image the offset controls affect the darker portion of the image and a professional calibrator can use these settings to neutralize the grayscale to the d65 white point that is used within the film and broadcast industry color management system if we go into it, you can adjust the three primary colors of red, green and blue. And actually, <laughs> the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta and yellow as well. And under each color, there are three parameters for you to adjust. Basically, hue, saturation and gain, also known as brightness or luminance. So this is a HSL based color management system. and. I will be testing its effectiveness when I review this projector in the next couple of weeks. Cinema Master, if we go into it, Color Enhancer, again, I don't know what this does, but by just guessing, it's probably a function to oversaturate all the colors. Flesh Tone, probably focusing on skin tones, and I think the most effective flesh tone controls I've seen it's actually on Samsung TVs before year 2015 or 2016, I think, where they targeted the flash tones really in an in-depth manner, allowing you to adjust the flash tones to a really accurate level. But on projectors, what I've seen is that the flash tone controls actually only move the color temperature globally. So I'll be interested to see if this BenQ W2700 can target the skin tones in a more targeted manner. Pixel Enhancer 4K, this is a projector that uses a TI-based 4K chip with use mirroring technique to simulate a 4K image from a 1080p chip. So presumably this will just enhance the effect and also maybe add some edge enhancement in the process. Motion Enhancer 4K, this is I believe BenQ's motion interpolation system, if we actually switch it to basically engage it, and you can see that the projector goes into a different mode slightly, and then I'll have to go into the menu and turn it to either low, middle, or high, and then I'll just turn it off for now. Right, and again, I will have to and that was cinema master, and with no no introduction, you will notice you know, uh, so I won't actually talk about it too much. I think at this price point, I'm very very impressed that that BenQ managed to implement a dynamic iris on the w twenty seven hundred or h t thirty five fifty and I believe it is only an on-off toggle without any way to determine how far the iris will go or the aggressiveness of the dynamic iris algorithm. But I'll be testing the function when I review this projector to see whether there are any artifacts introduced with dynamic iris and also the increase in contrast performance that is brought about by this function. Brilliant color. I have to admit, I don't really know what it is. I'll have to actually measure the colors with it on and off. You can see that it actually maybe you know, saturates some of the colors. But again, I'll need to put a meter on the screen. 
or the projector to determine the exact function of this. Light mode, if you enter it, you can see that there are three modes here, normal, economic, and smart eco. So normal will be operating at full lamp, which means that the fan noise will be the loudest. Economic will be operating in what on other projectors will be known as the low lamp mode, which means that the fan noise will go down to become quieter. Whereas Smart Eco is going to analyze the picture on screen and adjust the lamp mode automatically. And as with most things, that depends on the display making the adjustments automatically. I don't really like it because, you know, I don't think they are clever enough to know what's right and what's wrong. So I would either choose between normal or economic mode. I'll leave it on normal for now, even though from this video you may hear a bit more fan noise in the background and for that I have to say that you know it can't be helped because I'm standing fairly close to the projector. Reset current picture mode, so I won't do that for now but if I go back one level and go to the next level, overscan adjustment, I think you, know, you can you know either zoom the picture in, I think. Yeah, you can see the OPPO logo on the top left corner is now oh you can't see it because you know basically you know this uh, actually just uh, zoom the picture in 3d yes this projector supports 3d for those of you who still like enjoying movies in this sort of format hdr again it, it, this is a hdr capable projector but as with most projectors i think you have to be realistic about the hdr impact that projectors can bring because they simply are not capable of the light output of let's say a direct view display such as LED LCDs or OLEDs can deliver. Silence mode. So this is basically an on-off toggle which again remember earlier I talked about the normal and economic light mode basically the high lamp and low lamp mode so if you actually engage the silent mode what it will do is that it will force it into a low lamp mode and if you go back to the picture settings you'll be stuck with the silence mode where all these you know can be adjusted if i go into light mode let me just check yes uh, it will be economic mode will be selected if you select silence mode and let me just switch this off for now and yeah so you can actually place the projector this is quite fun you know you can obviously ceiling mount this projector and invert it and mirror it and you will be still be able to get a nice image well a correct image that is doesn't look inverted on screen auto keystone so depending on the position of the projector I think there's a gyroscope inside this projector and the projector can apply keystone automatically to align the corners but as with most keystoning there is usually some deterioration in the resolution of the projected image so normally I would just like turn it off test pattern you can display a test pattern for you that allows you to set focus and also the, the zoom distance aspect ratio you can select 43 or 69 for trigger i'm really impressed that all these like automation controls are actually available on uh, such a affordable projector high altitude mode why is it on I, did i switch it on i have no idea so switch it off for now languages right i'm not going to go through this lamp settings so yeah you can either reset the lamp timer once you change a new bulb or you can see that this projector has only accumulated one hour in normal mode right you know i'm basically just burning through it <laughs> and if i go down to hdmi settings this is important if you are using a pc i think auto generally will be the best setting but if you are so inclined you can set it to full which means that 
it will go into a PC mode 0 to 255 or a limited setting which will adhere to the legal video range or 16 to 235 auto I believe is always the best option at least on projectors anyway right and you can set a password and key lock LED indicator you can turn off the LED indicators on the projector itself reset all settings I don't want to do that for now now ISF ISF projector ISF calibrators like myself you know we can enter a secret pin onto this projector and then it will unlock two further picture modes the ISF day and ISF night mode now I don't know why you would want an ISF day mode because projectors I think generally you won't get the best experience for daytime anyway but you know I think this projector is pretty bright so maybe you know you can set a separate ISF day mode for use in a relatively bright room but yes if you hire an ISF calibrator to calibrate this projector they can set the ISF day and ISF night mode which for, for daytime and nighttime viewing firmware upgrade and if you have a new firmware you can upgrade using a USB key which is pretty convenient rather than some really convoluted serial port method that some other projector brands use and last but not least info and basically gives us the all the information about the video source that's actually coming in and again I stress that you can see that light usage time is still only at one hour which means that you know this is brand new out of the box so I'll probably need to run it in for at least you know 40-50 hours before I can get around to measure and calibrate it but yeah this is a quick run through of the settings that are available on this BenQ W2700 or HT 3550 projector. I hope you have found this video useful. So I'll be spending the next couple of weeks reviewing this projector. If you have anything in particular that you want us to test or any questions about this projector, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube section below and I'll try my best to read them and answer them. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTP Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.